This is World War II Snail Simulator, a game that might still be in early access, but despite that, is one of the best first-person shooters that I've played in a long time. In this video, I'm going to tell you why it's so good, why I'm enjoying it, and why you too would want to be a World War II snail. Welcome back to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel. Hit like and subscribe for more tea and biscuits. I'm a gastropod with an assault rifle and we're advancing on the enemy position. Now there's 50 guys on my side and 50 guys on the enemy side because this game supports 100 people in a battlefield, which is absolutely bonkers, but also absolutely fantastic. And as you can see here, I've got a bunch of my teammates in front of us that are going to help us capture the point. Now, what I found playing this is that through the design of the game, what ends up happening are these really organic and authentic World War II battles, which really makes you feel as if you are in a episode of Band of Brothers or a scene from Saving Private Ryan. Now, don't get me wrong, this game is not a full-on 100% perfect snail simulator it is a sort of balance of realism and not really arcade but you know accessible gameplay given that you're playing this with a keyboard and mouse and it is a video game and has to be fun if you were to chart this game between the ultimate jogging simulator that is armor 3 and uh, too much energy drink i'm a 12 year old playing fortnite in my bedroom then this game is basically a couple of points underneath armor. I'm sure some of the Milsim guys will cry over this not being realistic enough, but you know, they're Milsim guys, so we can ignore everything they say. If you like Squad, Insurgency, those types of games, then you'll probably really love this. In my mind, I like to think of this as a slightly more realistic Battlefield 1942, but with less vehicles. I mean, imagine if DICE made Battlefield 1942 in 2020 and uh, it hadn't been destroyed by EA and the focus was actually on making a good game rather than something to just milk money out of people and just do weird stuff that no one cares about. You'd probably end up with something a bit more like this. Now, what really stood out with this for me compared to some other sort of semi-realistic shooters, maybe like Red Orchestra, is that you do die randomly in this game uh, you know, it does have frustrating moments, but after about two hours of playing this, you start to learn how to use cover more effectively. You start to have more of an expectation of what's a dangerous thing to do, uh, what's a safe thing to do, uh, and also stick with your squad or how to work with your squad and how to work with your army as you progress through the map. You, you work these things out to really minimise the chance of you actually dying and you actually have a lot of control as a player over the risk you're taking and the likelihood that you that you will get killed in the game and the frustration of dying and having to respawn and get back to the to the battlefield of this type of game weirdly this has ended up being one of the least frustrating games that i've played and even if you do get killed and you do have to jog back often there's a spawn that's placed appropriately so you don't have to do the the armor two full-on bear grills one week trek across the map you, you know you can get straight back into the action and begin enjoying it i mean those kills through the window there it looked like some kind of pre-scripted situation in a single player fps but that was in multiplayer and this happens constantly in this game is it feels like it's it's so awesome some of this stuff happening with people running across edge lines and you popping out and bipping them off in the face uh, but it's all multiplayer it's all real people that you're ruining their day by shooting them from a distance and that brings me to the weapons in this which i find really just fun to use like they're, they're proper accurate if you're on target you shoot someone they, they go down none of this shooting people for half an hour it's like proper a bullet is a bullet <laughs> you don't want it you don't want a bullet hitting you and because of that short time to kill with this you uh, you have a chance against four or five other guys if you're using cover properly and you know how to move around you can take four or five people on and beat them whereas if it's something where you've got to shoot someone a hundred times well by the time you've killed that one person the other five people have surrounded you and you're done for look at this medics just revived me i'm healing up happy times proper teamwork oh dear Moral of the story is, don't be a medic, and if someone throws a grenade through the window, maybe move out of the way. But that was the end of the uh, five-minute run there, and that just that five minutes of gameplay was as good as a, 
a, a proper scripted sequence that I've played in other single player games. But it was with real people, so ten times better. Now, with this being on the more realistic side, as I say, the ideal way to play the game is to play with the squad that you join in when you join the multiplayer session. You have to pick a squad, it'll put you in one. Um, and some servers will enforce this. If you run off by yourself, they'll get annoyed with you and try and kick you. But, um, having said that, you can actually have a ton of fun just playing this on your own and lone wolfing it a bit. And if you actually can lone wolf it in a productive manner, then uh, people don't really tend to get annoyed with you. It's, it's more if you lone wolf it in a way that's really not helping anyone. Airstrike coming my way. I, I will just stand and stare at it. I, I did move out of the way enough to uh, only get a few chunks of metal in the thigh. Fortunately, just like real life, you can merely wrap a bandage around it and you'll be totally okay. But what you can see here is the forest map, Hurtgun Forest, which uh, really demonstrates the different environments that are in this game and how much the environments change the dynamics of the warfare and the nature of warfare. In the case of this map, I tend to be spending a lot of ammunition on tree stumps that I've mistaken for an enemy, but better safe than sorry, that's what I always say. At the moment, there's four absolutely humongous maps in the game, with each of them being based on real-world locations, which are, and it's literally the real-world locations. If you look at the map and the real life, it, you know, it, it's like a... A recreation, historical recreation. And to be honest, despite there only being four maps at the moment, with them, they are adding more maps, there's enough there that you, you could just keep playing it. You just get into the gameplay and the maps are just a sort of overall context for it. And uh, so here's another thing that really stands out with this game. So when I'm playing, I don't know, Battleground, Player Unknown's Battleground, or some of these other games now that have like really detailed environments, you often find that you're sort of you kind of die at random and you're like well where did the enemy come from where did they, why did they get me from over there what I, you know how was i supposed to know even in a situation where you've sighted the enemy they sort of flank you and you're like oh, hang on, i didn't hear where, how they flanked me or you know it, you're just like uh, that just seems a bit off but in this the positional audio is absolutely fantastic so the enemy gunshots are, are very easy to work out whereabouts they're coming from uh, way more so than I've found in, uh, in other titles. And that's despite your team firing machine guns, shells, grenades going off. If you hear an enemy fire a shot, you, you can normally, just from the single shot, you can normally work out in the general vicinity that it is. And when they do the second shot, you're like, okay, well, now I know pretty much for sure that's where they are. But then, second to that, the actual uh, sound of footsteps when people are running and those sort of movement sounds, again, are, are really nicely done so that if you're lying in the ground here and you can't visually see where someone is, you can listen out to their footsteps to then work out where they are to then surprise them or potentially outmaneuver them. Um, I've noticed this not just in this forest map, but when I've been walking along hedgerows and things and then I've, I've worked out there's another squad or number of guys or where, you know, and it, it's just so refreshing to have that attention to detail in the audio um, in, in a game like this because it really does remove that frustration of dying at random or not having an ability to mitigate the randomness. Like you can, There's such a good skill ceiling to this in terms of what you can do, even by yourself, even without a squad, to... to uh, make it so that it's your fault when you die and that's what makes it rewarding when you stay alive longer and actually gives you a chance uh, so the, the audio in this game I, I have to give them like at least six seven tea bags maybe, maybe i'm gonna give them nine tea bags for the audio i wish more games took the same approach Now, to give a rounded view, I'm going to say some negatives here. Brace yourself, people that can't take negativity in the, at all or anything critical, because I know there's a lot of you out there. These <laughs> people that literally have a mental breakdown if you say anything negative. But negatives of this game at the moment, I would say the biggest one, and, and probably really the only thing that will actually is a, is a real hindrance to the game, is that the frame rate can often dip quite low and. That's even with my 2080 Ti 3900X. Yes, I'm an idiot. I know. It's just stupid to spend that much money on a graphics card and whatever. But I'm a YouTuber. That's my excuse. I'm allowed to be stupid when it comes to PC hardware. The point is, be prepared. If you don't have a beast of a PC, 
to be dropping in sort of sub 30, 40 FPSs at times. And also as it is right now, the changing the graphic settings don't necessarily improve things. There's also a few little bugs in this, like sometimes when you lie down you, you and then get up again, you can't rotate fully. So you're stuck in like tank mode. Um, sometimes when you're crawling over the floor, you suddenly like pivot up if you're going over a hillside. You know, all the little kind of buggy things that are just the fact of it being an early access title. So if you are buying this now, keep in mind it is early access. Um, hopefully the developers will fix those things. Maybe they won't. I, I think they will do. If you look at their update, like the new maps they've added, and you look at their posts on Steam, their updates have actually been really significant and really consistent. So I, I, I have relatively good faith in this developer that they will actually just keep improving this and polishing all, all these things uh, until they're not an issue at all. Even with the game in the state that it is right now, for £20 or so that you can buy it for, um, I, I've easily got my £20 worth of entertainment from it. So that, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of people go, oh, it's early access, you can't be, you can't be critical. But it's like, no, you can buy it. So I'm going to say what it is as it is right now. And even as it is right now, as I say, I, I, I highly recommend this. I've had an absolute blast playing it. And in this video, I've not even talked about the proper team communication through voice over IP, which says you've got team and the commander talk and talk within your local vicinity all through in-game voice, which is amazing. I've not talked or shown tanks. You've got, you can be a tank commander, you can drive the tanks around. Um, uh, I, I, I've not, there, there's so much. There's lots of little things, approaches, tactical things and other, other maps, uh, the Omaha, but I've just not, I've not shown that much in this video. I don't want this video to go on for ages, so I've, I've really just focused on what I really like about this and the fact that I, I, I highly recommend this game. So what's going to happen now is people will be influenced, some of them will buy it and they will think it's terrible and they will comment and hate me forever, but some of you, hopefully the majority of you, potentially get this and think, oh wow, Game of Muscle, thanks for letting us know about this amazing game, it looks really fun, I'm, I'm, I bought it, oh, I played it, I'm really enjoying it, oh, you're the best Game of Muscle, I'm really glad I subscribed and click the like button so that you can make more videos letting us know what are good games to play. That, that's my hope anyway. But uh, let me know, guys, in the comments uh, if you're enjoying this. And I'm sure I'm going to get a thousand comments as well saying that I have to play Postscriptum because it's better than this. Uh, from, from what I understand, both games are good in different ways. And perhaps maybe you should own both of them. But I will get Postscriptum and I will try it out as well. I'm just getting into this. One thing at a time, guys. I've only got so much time to play shooters with. So happy Sherman Tank warmed water on a tea bag, tea drinking. And uh, till the next video, thanks for watching, goodbye.